Imagine if you ain't take it right. What? Not that. And welcome to another episode of Sophisticated <laughs> 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 No, if y'all be hearing always... what we talking about before we roll, yeah, I think Av. Uh, she texted me the other day. She was like, she gonna start taking like behind the scenes vi- uh, footage and whatnot. I was like, I fucks with you because Listen. we need it. There's a lot of bullshit that we talk about. Listen, before the mics are turned on, choose your character because we, we probably. Be I know. I don't. I don't know if any of the engineers or in their like meetings have ever said it, but I think we're their favorite client. Cause I would hope so. I think we talk we're, mad shit. I think we're very nice on our days. We have our days. I don't, I don't think we've ever... Yeah, we've always been nice to we're all the engineers. We're not crazy. Yeah. I'm not saying crazy. I finally but. met Nicole today. I was excited. Who's I haven't met her before. Nicole is... The studio manager. The studio manager. <laughs> <laughs> I was Chris and I didn't even, We didn't even introduce <laughs> we ourselves. We didn't even introduce the show. Oh, no. Welcome to another episode of Sophisticated Ignorance. I'm Steven. That's Naima. That's Vixen. You're back. Oh, Jesus. Gang. <laughs> Gang. Wait, did you see? The, oh, I already showed Diane, but did you see that IG story I posted? Yeah. It was like that uh, the the screenshot of the text message from um, Dykeman, and it oh. said "you're," and the response was like, "Yo, chill, bro." <laughs> Literally, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Oh my that God. shit had me in tears at work. In absolute tears. It made me giggle because I already know that feeling. You'd be like, "Oh, it's the sixty degrees. I'm going to Dykeman." I, I don't even go to Dykeman, but that shit, it just You never my wanted heart. to come. I'm so good, man. You, I'm you need good. one night. I've been, uh, I've been in the Heights plenty of times when I was young. <laughs> the Heights. Like the one show. One night. One night <laughs> in Dykeman. It's, y'all, it's different over there. One night in Dykeman sounds like a bad movie. It sounds like a horror movie. Uh, that should have been fire. Dykeman. Coming to theaters. I remember like when hangover. I was, because I, before. like the hangover. Except we be jumping in and out of cars. See, no, <laughs> no. I'm not trying to. Shit is just my different steps. over there. Cause I went to City College, which was in the Heights, and I remember me and my homeboy. I went somewhere further uptown, and like he was my protection because they could definitely point out who's Hispanic and who's black, black. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was different over there. It's different now, though. They're not like that now. Now they they're way more tame. welcoming now. Nah, they be ready. Just like hang out with you, oh. drink with you, <laughs> not like that. You have to complete your sentence. You can't just say they be ready for what? Y'all not always got a delay. Y'all never give me a chance to finish. All right. All right. May- maybe. Maybe one time. Well, wait before it gets really hot or really no, 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 nice. No, no, no. That's the best time. You're nah, more see, mobile then because your muscles nah. is more relaxed. It's not so you know chilly out. Your muscles are more relaxed. For I, don't re- I don't ever want to be. I don't ever want to be relaxed and comfortable. Because that's when you get dropped. No! <laughs> nah. Oh. Always got my head on a swivel. I mean, it kind of even goes into today's topic. But before we even get into today's topic, shout out to our sponsor, Scotch Porter. Yeah. Uh, the one we the haven't way. shouted them out for a while because we need to get my paperwork straight. Well, hey. I mean, hey. That's, Look, that's just how business goes. Shout know? out to SP. Keeping the beards uh, nice and lubricated, especially during the uh, cold of winter. Well, it's summer. I don't know what weather it is. Anymore. Oh yeah, it was dumb nice <laughs> on Tuesday. I was. It was lit. It was lit. During these uh, global whamming times, you know what I'm saying? Um, keep your beard nice and lubricated with Scotch Porter. Beard, face, hair, everything. Your balls. They cover it all. They literally cover they it. Literally all. cover it all. That's a fact. Just make sure you use the code SI10, ScotchPorter.com. You will be good to go. You'll be good to go. But um, for this week's topic, it kind of just hit me out the blue. I don't even know what made me even think about this. It may be something I was watching or just being in my head. But I had asked on like IG stories like a couple weeks ago. So it was like, as for being a minority, being a black person, are you like programmed to have a form of PTSD? And I just felt like that was just something that needed to we just needed to expand upon and have like a real conversation about that's dope i'm ready i don't think i have any form of ptsd we'll um... find out soon enough dun, dun, dun. The next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> okay dr phil like, what the hell? <laughs> so i figured we start with like the proper definition for a ptsd and it's basically post-traumatic stress disorder that and 
It's basically a disorder in which a person has difficulty recovering from after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. And it's very common, and more than 3 million cases in the U.S. are documented every year, which is crazy. I mean, yeah, that's still a very, very fucking high number. That's 3 million people that's going through some shit that they cannot deal with that's after in the, the U.S. Fact. And it's just like including people who have gone to war and come back and, yeah. all and these that's, are just and those are just yeah. numbers that's based off of people that actually been diagnosed so imagine the amount of people that, that haven't gone to the doctor haven't gone to see seek therapy and things right. of that nature so that that number could probably be even triple the triple the amount to be honest mm-hmm. so um yeah, you said you true. didn't you didn't think you had PTSD but there is a test that you can take a quick yeah. uh five question test so yeah. I I filled it out and I answered no for everything so I was safe you answered did no you, for everything but did you answer no being honest or was it no I was being honest that's Steven ego you have that no, was Steven ego being, I was being honest cause that ego don't think nothing wrong with him I mean alright well to be fair the, but I have admitted that I would like to go to therapy the quiz the quiz that I mean those were imaginary questions it I mean, was I was, it was like a little yeah. open and mind you it only covered the span of a month so it was just like in the past couple of weeks, have you really suffered? Like, unless you have been through something extremely traumatic, I don't think in the span of a month you're really going to have those, like, major things like dreams or, like, yeah. moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's normal day-to-day stuff, I think the day-to-day PTSD that a lot of people may experience hits people in different ways. But, I mean, there's more traumatic events that happen in your life that's a little bit more, like, spread out. And depending mm-hmm. on how um, recent those events have been, they may hit you at any time. So it was a little unfair to say, like, within a month, have you f- seen this or, or felt this? Yeah, you this? Didn't, they didn't even give you an example of, like, right. what could have triggered it. Like, when did the event happen? I was like, what event? I was like, what other question? The event. Like, <laughs> the what happened? Event. <laughs> the thing. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> I, right. I, got another, I got a question to your question. Yeah, it was a, it was a little weird of a quiz. But, I mean, I get, I get the premise of what it was yeah. trying to do, just, like, get a gauge of, like, are you suffering or are you going through certain things that might trigger you trigger is another big word that we use a lot lately and and certain things that you know kind of throw you off in the sense of that con- that condition so i mean ptsd comes in many forms you know what i mean like obviously we have not been to war but at the same right. time the stuff that we see on tv the stuff that we see in the news and social media and all those stuff, it's those things kind of compile in us, especially if it's affecting people that look like us, then it's kind of like, how do you deal with all those pressures? But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. So I took the test. It was five questions, and I got a two. Oh, same, sis. So it was like, ain't nothing wrong thing? with you, but you lose stress. You should probably get some sleep. Mm. That's pretty much sleep, exercise, learn how to relax. That's pretty. Well, much let me check to see what the questions were again. Well, the first one was. Have you had any nightmares about events or thought about events when you did not want to? Uh, then another one was, have you tried hard not to think about previous events or went out of your way to avoid situation that, situations that reminded you of the events? Uh, have you been constantly on guard, watchful, or easily startled? Uh, have you felt numb or detached from people, activities, or your surroundings? And then lastly, if you felt guilty or or unable to s- stop blaming yourself or others for the events of any problems the events may have caused. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you saying it's kind of that assessment, probably not really accurate. Right. I mean, that's just something I just pulled up on a whim. Of course. Yeah, I would hope nobody takes that, like, seriously in the sense, in the sense like, yo, do I have PTSD? And they take this quiz and then it's like, oh, shit, I got a 10. I'm fucked up. Like, and it's like, first of all, you're stressed out about, like, a nigga who ain't shit. So, technically, that's mm, not like... But... That's specific. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but for somebody, that could be PTSD. If you've gone through a... Re- if you've been in a really bad relationship, and now, moving forward, you're acting and moving in a certain way, that may be a form of PTSD. Yep. Happened to me. If you really think about it. <laughs> Fixes itself. No, that is. Yo, Flippin so annoying. I'm being super serious. So I recently started therapy a couple weeks ago. Clap Yay! For me. Clap for me. Clap, gang. Um, <laughs> how you gang on therapy? 
<laughs> no, um, honestly, and, yeah, and we should never take any serious <laughs> topic. Shout out to Chris, actually. I mean, other people too were definitely involved in that process, but specifically Chris and uh, also another homegirl of mine that kind of just like there were certain signs that were happening around that time that made me decide like I should take it seriously. And um, you know, when I was saying that PTSD comes in many forms, I realized that I had PTSD when it comes to my relationships and just other experiences from like childhood to now that kind of affect how I move. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, kind of recognizing those behaviors or recognizing those situations and really being truthful about it. Because I think being truthful about it is the first step to kind of understanding what your PTSD is and how you handle it. You know? mm -hmm. A lot of people might try to deny it or be like, nah, that's not really anything or kind of like push it back. But if you take the opportunity to like be real with yourself and say like, all right, yo, that is a problem. That's something that does affect me. That's something that you know, I've been avoiding for a while, now I can kind of come to terms with it. That's when you can start kind of like reversing the, you know, the actions of whatever it is that triggers you. You know what I mean? So. Every day is a winding road. Here we go. <laughs> Sign me. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> Next, we'll jump into um, some symptoms of PTSD. And I guess, well, I guess you're, you're admitting that you... Do you suffer? Problem. Got a problem. Got a problem. Well, I don't, don't want to say mean, suffer. Suffer, suffer. That's a very open-ended word because it's not yeah. really a matter of you're not, dealing with it. It's not crippling. You know what I'm saying? It's not like oh my gosh, I can't move or or whatever the case may be. But I I'm recognizing certain things that have caused a level of PTSD depending on the the experience. Well, for in the category of behavior, there is agitation, hostility self-destructive behavior or social uh, uh, social isolation then psych psychologically you could have flashbacks fear anxiety mistrust when it comes to your mood you could lose interest or pleasure in activities guilt or feel loneliness then sleep you could have you could suffer from insomnia i have nightmares and then also and then also a common thing is emotional detachment or unwanted thoughts. So based off of that list, you can just go around. Have you do you think you've have ex do you think you've experienced anything like those symptoms like recently or in your past or <clears throat> like? I definitely have insomnia, but I'm dealing with a lot right now. Insomnia I just be like, I don't care. If it ain't about what I'm trying to do then I really don't care. Mm. I mean, I think through all some of all of these things, I think you just go through that as an individual. So I guess yeah, you, yeah. and you pretty much have some form of PTSD because yeah. you're going through experiences and you're gonna react in a certain way. Right. So so is kinda, it really PTSD? Or is it just you react into a situation? I think you have to be also real about if those specific symptoms are related to a certain event. Like, right. of course, we all go through insomnia or yeah. lack of sleep. Like, that's everyday shit. But I'm saying if if you recognize that some of these specific things are related to, like, let's say you lost somebody or somebody's sick or you had a bad relationship or whatever the case may be, like, be recognizing that, all right, because I went through this, this cause creates these effects. You know what I mean? Instead of it being like, yo, it's a Tuesday. One -off. Today's trash. Like, I'm just not going to get up. You know what I mean? It's There's a difference there. Yeah, I think it has to be more something like a pattern as opposed to like something that here and there. Here and there. Right. Yeah, we're all gonna have our days. You know what I mean? Like Right, yeah, I don't think I suffer from PTSD. I be cracking a joke sometime when they be like, Oh Naima, let's go on a cruise and I'm like, I can't, you know, I got PTSD or whatever. They be like, Oh my god, you do what happened? I was like slavery. Slavery and being brought in a the boat. They be like, Naima, really? I'm like, I think ancestral PTSD can be a thing. I, well, we'll get into that. Yeah, okay. Cause, uh, that's a new one. <laughs> no, no, I'm being, I'm being serious. Like, no, I'm not saying that that's I wrong, think it but can be. like, I, I, I don't really carnival cruises to slay. I was also like, being I an just, asshole at the same time. Okay, so see, but, yeah. you see, you see. When I thought about it, I was like, that could be a thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, well, we'll get into that because that was something that was brought to my attention when I was having a conversation with a coworker about PTSD. But, um,. So, obviously, Vixen, you mentioned that you believe you suffer from some form of PTSD. Mm -hmm. So, what what have been, like, specific behavioral patterns that you've noticed you are, like, instinctively doing because of past experiences? Um, 
Well, I found out recently, not found out, I, I think, and as it pertains to therapy, I'm treating all these revolutions, all these things I'm learning about myself as new, even mm-hmm. though I've kind of already knew them already or I've kind of thought about them, but I'm treating it as new just in the sense of kind of rebuilding those blocks. So, um, you know, in the sense of like a PTSD, I realized that I have a, a hero mentality or like a hero complex where I feel compelled to Can't like help people me. and like, you know, try to save people for the mm-hmm. sake of like me trying to validate Care. myself, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people kind of suffer through that and it has affected like relationships and, and, and other people close to me. So I think, you know, as it pertains to like my relationships and stuff, be, creating that same behavior or like acting on that same behavior um, is somewhat of a form of PTSD and that's something that I, I need to try to reverse. Um, I mean, there can be other things too, but that's kind of like the recent thing that I've kind of came to terms with um, lately. So it comes in many forms, you know what I mean? Like, there's never just one thing. No, you might be that one. Oh, no, no, like really. the PTSD situation? No, yeah, or just anything Anyone? that you feel like at this point in your behavior that you do that's probably triggered by something that you've witnessed mm. or would you like me to go first i don't know i think the way i'm dating now mm. not really probably because yeah i'm very cautious and very um reserved i guess so do you say you kind of have like somewhat tr- trust issues maybe because that maybe. was something that was listed maybe yeah i feel like i don't but i just feel like i'm i'm trying to be more aware of things so mm-hmm. it causes me to be a little bit more laid back and reserved so you're not as let's say comfortable or not as vulnerable right i'll say i'm not as vulnerable well, but i think it's well, working in my favor this time around and the day before i was too trusting i was too open mm-hmm. and it didn't work in my favor i think that's usually like the direct reaction that women have after they come out of a really really bad relationship I, yeah and my relationship like, wasn't bad it was just a a, a unfortunate um, breakup yeah right. that we had a breakup for so i think now when i date i'm first of all more open to just dating and before i used to be like all right i want to date with you and i'm not talking to you no more now i'm like really enjoying the process and like mm-hmm. meeting new people and talking and i guess that's a positive that comes out of i guess ptsd if it's a positive behind that right that's more adapting at yeah. the end of the day but yeah the ptsd could be the sense of like you know now you're more aware because before yeah. you used to be just kind of like carefree yeah. and not really like observant but now like you know especially if you're opening yourself up to dating more mm-hmm. now you're going to be more mindful you're gonna, yeah. your standards are going to be a little bit more in check you know the things that you're looking for when it comes to these people you know are going to be a little bit more you yeah. know astute instead of it being like all right well you got money right because <laughs> <laughs> you know because <laughs> you know like so yeah that's important i think for me even though i've never had anything directly happen to me but I think I'm just very aware of my surroundings, just based off of like things I've seen firsthand or even from like third party view. Because you were saying like there's so much shit on TV and there's so much shit on social media, and it's like you never want to be that person to think like, oh, how could this happen? And it could never happen to me, and then it fucking ends up happening to you. So like I remember growing up, and you know, and you could attest to this since we went to the junior high school and seeing innocent people just get flipped for no fucking reason or that was me <laughs> <laughs> what i was i was what did that picture but... you flying in the air <laughs> <laughs> i really flying did in the air? like you said he said flip numbers like, like, first like, 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 <laughs> that's, that's just about to say <laughs> that. Jumped, 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 y'all know my magic wild <laughs> Yeah, like I see shit like that. I've seen a fucking dude just based off of the colors he was wearing. Like, he get a fucking brick smacked across his face. It's like, Sheesh. shit like that is like, yeah. ever ever since then, those moments is like, I'm always oh, aware alert. of my surroundings and always on high alert because you never know what people are fucking gonna do. I'm, I remember when it was like a week or a few weeks where there was like a trend of like people getting pushed onto the train tracks. And yeah. ever, I remember around that time, I was like, yo, I'm standing right in the middle of the platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at every single soul. I old, like young, white, definitely. black, shit like, like I'm not trusting none of y'all. Well, that's, I, I mean, have a PTSD that's a New York, when it comes to New York. York. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. Kind of, every little thing, I'm just like, Son, somebody going to train, they don't look right, I'm getting off. They had a game called the knockout game. 
It's not even a game. It's oh, just, yeah. I, I, I think just, I remember that one. People. <laughs> I remember that shit. That's yeah. it. That's the premise. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that alone got you on high alert. Mind you, uh, yesterday, me and my coworkers was talking about growing up in New York, and we was talking about how back in the day when you was younger, you could not go to school on Halloween. Because yeah. that's Halloween? when all the gang initiations was happening. That's when they was attacking women on the junction. They was just out here wilding. So being a young person and just trying to, just going to school, <laughs> you could develop some shit. Because all that shit is, drama, is traumatizing. Facts. And even probably back then, like, between freshman Fridays, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be a freshman on a Friday. <laughs> like, yeah. that's just wild. You know what I'm saying? And all the things that you'd see, like, when we were younger, I don't think we processed it as PTSD back then, but we know, like, certain triggers, like, yo, can't go there or can't do this, or yo, see a color, gotta back up, gotta walk the other way home, you know what I'm saying? Like, and those things just were, like, minor back... I mean, they were major, but for us... You know, yeah, we're like, too we're young like, to really comprehend yeah. what's really going on. Because exactly. you always talk about how you and your sister, when you was outside, when y'all was growing up in Brownsville, how y'all used to just have to duck randomly because yeah. guns shooting. was shooting. Right. I mean, I'm, I don't think you're doing anything behavior-wise now at this point, but I can imagine somebody that, you know, is never comfortable in those surroundings or mm-hmm. just never comfortable in general because... You never know, never know. Yeah. when right. shit would Especially pop now, up. when I go back to Brooklyn, I'm in certain neighborhoods. I'm like, I remember when this used to happen over here. So now I'm still looking like, uh, exactly like, like I don't want to go in this neighborhood. Or I don't want to go. It might be street. better, but just probably seeing a specific thing, like certain yeah, mm-hmm. like, symbols or certain yeah. things, could trigger something. Like, yo, that's that spot where I had to duck when that shit went mm-hmm. down, or you know what I'm saying? I had to run because somebody was just bussing because it was a Monday. Like, I don't yeah. know. So that being said, do you feel as though PTSD makes a stereotype? Oh, like... For In example, the sense of... I remember... I think this was like a J. Cole interview from years ago. And he was saying how it was fucked up, but it was just basically how he was programmed. If When he was living in New York City, if he was walking... If it was late at night, he's walking down the street, he sees a white person intersecting with him, he's gonna, you know, not feel no type of way. But if he sees somebody that looks like him late at night, he's gonna feel like he gotta, you know... Yeah, be on guard. Yeah, be on guard and be a little bit tense because he know, he don't know if this person has, you know, Ill pure intent, Ill, yeah. Ill intentions. So right. I feel like based on how you grew up or where you grew up, you kind of develop, a, you know, this form of stereotyping that not necessarily like you dislike people or you dislike a certain race. It's just that from where you, the neighborhood you come from or the things that you see, you start to look at people differently. Because I definitely fall in that same category where it's like, I don't expect harm from white people to a certain extent. But at the same time, if it's late at night and I see somebody that's Hispanic or somebody that's black, I know I got to keep myself, you know, be aware because you don't know what somebody could possibly do. And it's wrong because that same white person could... We we see that shit on the news all the time. Well, that's the that's And that's what makes it weird because it's like, even though we may not specifically be going through certain situations but you see on the news as you said like you know woman gets attacked by a guy you know 86 year old whatever and it's like, worse for women chick, chick got slashed it. just saw a, a story about some dude slashing this chick because I guess she didn't give him the time of day or some shit like that you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying like and these scenarios that we see online or on the news they happen all the time so now you consuming that information now it's like I right, well that shit could be me next that shit could be somebody I know you know what I'm saying? And that may make you stereotype certain people, but at the same time, it's a, I think it's a uh, defense mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Because no one wants to be the next headline. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in the sense of just protecting yourself, you might stereotype certain situations, but, I mean, if the shit looks fucking shady, like, you'd rather be cautious than just be like, all right, well, it could be nothing. Yeah. It's true. You don't want to be a hashtag. You definitely don't. And... Yeah, for women, it's ex- extremely worse because y'all can For most black men, they're probably in fear of the police or other black men. Right. In terms of women, especially black women, they have to basically... Well, not have to be, but they really can't trust anybody. Mm-mm. Can't trust white people to a certain extent. Can't trust black people to a certain extent. Can't trust different sexes, the same sex. Like, we've seen numerous scenarios where women are harmed regardless of mm-hmm. ethnic background, sexual orientation, 
So I would not be surprised if we were to pull a group of women and, you know, discuss the kind of behavioral things that they do. I wouldn't be surprised at those sort of results. Like, I remember um, I remember that dude, Chris Classic. I don't know if y'all follow him on social media. I follow him. But I remember he was talking about, uh, well, he didn't even talk about it. He just put up a post like, you know, if you're a woman and you've ever, well, at what point did you ever feel like you were not sexually abused, but some creep shit started to happen. And the messages that flooded in those comments was just disturbing and eye-opening. Like seven, eight, nine years old of men doing this, men doing that. And it's like, this is at a young age. So... This is when they're in controlled environments. If you're that young and things are happening to you at home or school, imagine when you're an adult, when you're out and about doing shit. Right. Like, wh- wasn't that, like, a couple weeks ago that girl got raped in a club in Atlanta? Yeah, they recorded. Like, I think I heard about that. Yeah, like, maybe. shit is crazy out here. So imagine, imagine not only that happening, but it happened in the public, and now it's out for the whole entire world to see. Yeah. But this, I mean, it's been happening for years. Now we just have more eyes and cameras to catch these things. You know what I'm saying? So just the fact that you're hearing more of these stories now is not necessarily because it's happening more. It's just the fact that these certain instances are being exposed more because we have social media, because we have things to, like, kind of capture these moments. And, you know, then you have to imagine, like, yo, how much of these incidents have occurred that have not been documented? You know what I mean? Like, the numbers have to be astronomical. To the point where it's just like, well, fuck. Where am I safe? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really reached that point where it's like you not really safe anywhere. And I mean, I didn't want to get to this point uh, prior, but um, yeah, when it comes to not being safe anywhere, I'm. I was. We were just talking about this off air. I just happened to be on Facebook. I, I God knows. First mistake. Go on. The only reason why I keep Facebook is because I have to have business accounts for social media and (laughs) even though they've done that you know now they put that block that says you know this is a graphic uh, this is a graphic video graphic Mm -hmm. image do not some shit still be getting through though for whatever reason I still tapped on it and it was a video clip on the 7 train I don't know if it was this older gentleman that they were trying to rob it looked like a group of Hispanic dudes boys or whatever they was trying to rob him he was fighting back it looked like they was trying to take his wallet out of his pocket and then all you hear is all you see is somebody pull out a gun and just start they probably let off at least a good 10 shots and just left them there they shot him yeah they shot him i don't know if he's alive or but they just shot him so let's, and this is yeah. not even the middle of the night this is like the sun is PM. out right Early broad daylight day. broad daylight and somebody was recording i mean in that instance, I guess it's fine because now you could at least identify the culprits to a certain right. extent because it, it was like a good quality uh, video, but it's like, fuck. So let's dissect that for a moment because now the different elements here and I mean, you kind of become a part of that because, all right, you're on Facebook, you see, you see a video that is being blocked for whatever graphic reason. You decide to click on it because you're either curious or just like, all right, what the fuck does this mean? You know what I'm saying? Then you watch this tragic event. Now you're affected. Is it the fault of you as the viewer deciding to view this content even though there was a warning? Or is it the fault of whoever shared it to say like, yo, this is fucked up. You gotta see this. Because that's what I was thinking about. You know, like, just thinking of this topic and just thinking mm-hmm. about how we tend to expose ourselves to traumatic experiences not because it's beneficial but more in the sense of like, we're all about the shock value these days. We're all about like, yo... I saw the shit, it's fucked up. Yo, y'all gotta see this, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, why do we tend to, like, gravitate towards this type of content that is traumatic or triggering or, like... Well, in that scenario, me and that person is both at fault. Because I did click on it, knowing what could possibly be on... Well, not knowing what was on the other side, but knowing it was something graphic. But then at the same time, if I remember vaguely, it wasn't like, oh, look at this look at what happened, we need to identify these people. It was like, yeah, yeah. oh, look at this crazy shit that happened the other day. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily yeah, they were trying to what, inform that's what bothers or me. trying to gather information to, you know, seek some sort of justice. It was like, right. yo, this shit is wild. Look what they're doing out here. Right. So in that scenario, you're both at fault. 
that's one scenario. So that that's more of a blanket, like, all right, you don't know what's going on. But let's say um, that whole scenario with the dude, uh, the last, uh, Philandro Castile, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like the whole Facebook Live thing. People knew what it was. You know, it's not like, oh, well, what is this? Let me click on it. People knew what was happening. Like it was a Facebook Live. Dude was in his car with his wife, with his girl and his kid and cop, you know, outside. And then he gets shot. You know what I mean? Like that alone is already a traumatic experience. Now people are sharing this shit. People are like, you know, it's circulating around now. You know what's going on. And people decide, you know what, I have to watch this for whatever reason inside of it. Mm-hmm. Knowing that is something traumatic. You, know, you you have the people that are like, yo, I gotta watch this because I just have to see what's going on. Then you have the other side is like, yo, don't share this shit because I don't need that type of energy in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, and once again, now now that you're aware, now that the user is aware of the type of content that they're consuming, is it the fault of the user again to, for consuming the shit, or is it more the person that decided? Well, I mean, obviously the girlfriend decided to share the shit for the sense of justice and mm-hmm. to like, yo, this shit's crazy, y'all. Facebook, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously that was done intentionally but it's like I think it all depends because it all depends on what you're watching it for because I think in this I think for that specific situation where people were watching that video I think because we had reached a point at that time where it's like there's no way that you were to kill somebody right and there's video evidence and we're not going to get justice this time so I think it's like almost that it's almost that shock value of like there's no way in hell this gonna go on and nothing happens. So I think that's why more people more people were tuned in 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 that aspect. Yeah. I mean, I, def- I, I definitely wanted to see exactly what happened. I don't even think I watched the whole thing. I don't even think it was the point of him getting shot. But I wanted to see like what happened to the point y'all niggas act like y'all y'all can't see any fault here. Right. Yeah, I think that's the standpoint of most people that are probably how you watching see it. No fault. Yeah, it was like, like trying to what? make sense of yeah, like, how could wait, this what? how could this person get off by legally well not even legally how could this person get off by killing somebody on video for no absolute reason mm-hmm. with his wife and kids in the vehicle. Right. I think that's what most people were watching it for. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't know. But like Naima was saying earlier, with you know, even though it was like an asshole joke that he was making about. Um, the boats. The boats. Cruises. Uh, I was talking to a co-worker the other day, and I was telling him how I was prepping for this next episode, because he asked me about the show, because he, he listens to the show. Shout out to him. Okay. So he asked me about the show, and I was telling him I was thinking about doing this PTSD episode, and he was like, oh, that's interesting or whatever, and I was telling him the angles that I was trying to take, and then he was like, oh, by the way, I've also heard like there's been studies that show that PTSD might actually be genetic. like It could be passed down from generation to generation. So even though for you, you were saying it as a joke. Ancestral PTSD. It's a, I mean, based based on Harvard's report, it might be a real thing. Well, they did studies and show it could possibly be a real thing. So basically, uh, the, I mean, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just to uh, go through this, it's like um, that, you know, usually PTSD involves people from that have participated in war or combat or rape victims. And that even though many people are exposed to even traumatic uh, events, they don't develop PTSD. Mm-hmm. And that's and they're probably and they're saying that's because of their genes. Like you based on your genes, if it's not something that's common in your bloodline, you could go through a traumatic experience and not suffer through PTSD after the fact as opposed to other people based on their bloodline they may deal with it after a traumatic period this is Harvard study I'm not fact checking it was just an article it it is an interesting find or interesting conclusion I personally don't think it has I don't know how valid that is unless they did some type of crazy experiments and shit um I think I think it just depends on the person how they consume trauma. Thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like certain things can be matchmatic, and it's just like, all right, well, shit happens every day, B. And then there's others that's like, oh shit, like this has happened to me. Now it's kind of consuming in a sense. It's a part of me now, and I can't really just shake it. You know what I mean? So really, that might just come down to apathy. To be and I think, well, moving, moving on, I think the reason why they they. Uh, are saying this is because they found that uh, PTSD 
and other mental disorders like being schizophrenic have shares share some sort of genetic overlap. So if you have schizophrenia in your family, there is a chance that you could develop yeah, that as well. That. So that if sense. there's a genetic overlap, then they're probably saying, well, if your family has, you know, because for example, right. Jewish History people, of, yeah, you if know. you had like a great great grandmother that dealt with the Holocaust, that could be something that could possibly be passed down yeah. in your genes. Interesting. Yeah, it was a interesting article. I would think I, it's more. I, I would. I mean. The genetic part of it is, is interesting. I would just think it's more historic than anything because, you know, like genes, you know, historical events are passed down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, slavery, the only reason why we know so much about slavery as it stands now is because of the historical records and accounts that have been passed down from certain from those generations. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Without those records, we don't really have a very askew, like, version of what slavery was, and we wouldn't really have a bigger picture. So... You know, with all those things passed down, and as we know, history repeats itself. So you learn about this very tragic event in history, which is slavery, and then, you know, you kind of make the parallels to today. So then it was like, damn, like, you know, that monumental event still rip- has ripples to today, mm-hmm. and that historical PTSD could be a thing. To where it was like, I, you know, you experience racism, or you experience, like, you know, social injustice. The workplace, or social injustice, or, you know, all these things, you know, so especially for people who have been in a part of that fight or been a part of those experiences in the 60s and 70s and, and they see just things happening now. So, like, as time progresses, certain, certain um, I guess, behaviors or certain mentalities kind of transfer with each generation, especially as similar things keep happening. So, yeah, I think a historical PTSD is definitely a thing. The genetic thing, as I said, I would have to see some, like, actual, I don't know, numbers well, research. PTSD, or, genetically, no. But shit like schizophrenia... Like, anything that could be mental, I would say yes. Yeah, same. Because PTSD could be triggered from something. Schizophrenia stuff is more mental. So I feel like a lot of times that can be passed down. It and has been um, situations when you could tell, like, oh, you're a little off, you might, kid might be off too. Like, autistic children and stuff like that. If, you're, mm-hmm. if like, your aunt or dad or somebody had it, it's a chance your, ch- your child can have it too, as well as being deaf. So certain things can be passed down. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That's true. And I mean, uh, and just to wrap up that article briefly, in the U.S., one in nine women will suffer from PTSD as opposed to one in 20 men, mm-hmm. which is a crazy number. And, like, it kind of almost goes back to what I was saying about how women can definitely have it tougher. Yeah. And that aspect. Everything triggers me, especially being on the train. Like, I don't like when men get through clothing. I just don't like it. Like, tr- it really blows my shit. Like, I really get tight. Trigger. The whole train. I really get tight. Yeah. Like, even if I'm walking down the street and I feel like I see a shadow on the floor and it's a man, I stop and I let him walk in front of me. Or I slow down just to see, like, wh- what are you doing? I've so seen... I've, I don't... It just... I get really I've nervous. Seen that I get nervous num- around too I've many I've seen men. that numerous times. Like, I got long limbs, so I walk fast regardless. But I definitely have seen scenarios where I'm just walking just to go to wherever the fuck I need to go, not paying attention to nobody, and I've seen women stop because I'm walking past them. Mm-hmm. Or walking, or it might be like in a scenario where you're walking behind a woman, not intentionally doing anything, just like yeah. flow of traffic, and then they might like look back, stop, or whatever the case would be, because there have been scenarios where probably some dude was walking behind them, and yep. then, yo, you're, and now they feel unsafe, and now mm-hmm. it's the whole thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> Yeah, and it kind of goes with the whole stereotyping thing. It's like, you know, six four guy just walking fast, dressed in black. He got Tim's on. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't, I don't feel safe. It's not exactly a, <laughs> a nice picture, but I mean, yeah, Around I mean, st- too. stereotype. I mean, stereotype or not, it's just like once again, you don't want to become a statistic. You don't like. It's better to take that precaution and be be mindful of of what could be or what could happen. In a respectful way, instead of it being like, I, every time you know a person walks behind you, you're, you know, what I'm saying like it's it's really circumstantial. Like, if if let's say you're in a crowd and somebody happens to be walking behind you in the day, it's more understandable than like you walk in at like two o'clock in the morning and dudes right, you know, what I'm saying like mm-hmm. I think the circumstances definitely play a role there. It's not gonna be like yo every time someone's walking behind you, yo what you do, yo yo yo. I don't like, know. I feel like that a lot of the time. Well. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I don't think it's circumstantial. Nah. It'd be, I mean, uh, it'd be I full of people outside. Especially because a lot of times most people have headphones on. 
So if I have my headphones on and I'm walking, and I just feel something behind me, I'm, I see a shadow. A lot of times I'm looking out at the floor to see, like, who's behind me or whatever. Right. And I just slow down because I don't know if it's a woman, I don't know if it's a man. And even if it's a woman, I still don't feel comfortable. You can definitely walk in front of me because you're walking too fast in front of me. And then I'm short, so automatically I'm a little nervous. Niggas is usually taller than me, everybody. And then, you know, the other day I'm walking to my sister's job to go pick up something. And there's just like a two girls just standing in the middle of the block not moving. So automatically I feel like you're trying me. So now I feel like... Well, well, okay, okay. All right. It's, it's, it's common courtesy. If you see someone walking, you step out the way a little bit. But oh, if you're just, were, standing, just there, standing there, just standing anything, there, and, yeah. they, and you're looking at me walking, so it's like, well, what are you doing? Okay. Like, I, I feel they were, like, like they plotting. I thought yeah. they were just minding the business. Okay, so then I'm like, different. so then automatically you're triggered, like, and I need to be on point in case I walk past you and y'all turn around and do yeah. something to me you know what i'm saying it's like little yeah. things like that especially as a woman because some people other women might not like you just because you're cute or you don't like your bag so they just they just people just want to fuck with you sometimes yeah so you never know like i know for myself like i get up early to go to work i don't turn on my headphones until i get inside the train station just yeah. in case because mm-hmm. i get up early sun's not even out so just in case because the the there's corner stores that open up that early so mm-hmm. you don't know what type of who the fuck is going to the corner store at 5 o'clock in the morning? You would be surprised. And usually yes. those are not the people that you need to be associating yourself right. with in those scenarios. So I, I don't even turn my headphones on. I have them on, physically on my right, head. Yeah, but, yeah, but I don't turn that, the music. don't be on. I don't turn on the music just in yeah. case if I hear anything crazy. I mean, mainly for the rats. But... <laughs> Two if, keys. But any, if the, anything happens, I got to be aware. Because yeah. never know. I think I think everyone should be more aware in general in, in in those type of situations, but specifically where, you know, the height or the chance of something like crazy happening is a little more heightened. You know what I'm saying? You you, you know, lower your music, have one earbud in, or whatever the case may be, and just be mindful of your surroundings. Because at that point, I don't even think it's PTSD. I think it's just more just safety mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Even if nothing has ever happened to I'd you be before. Stressed. You know what I'm saying? But it's stressful, yeah. <laughs> Because you got to constantly have the head on the swivel. Like, yeah. So I don't even say that's like... I don't know. I think it's a balance. Ba- yeah, I think it's a balance of both. It's a mix. Because, uh, I mean, we could get into this next, but with everything that you see, even if it doesn't happen to you directly, mm-hmm. just seeing some shit is like, yo, fam, I'm never thinking, yo, I'm going to get robbed and possibly shot at on the fucking 7 train going to work and going to home. Now I have to be very aware when the sun is out middle of the day mm. to see if you know some young niggas ain't got nothing better to do <sighs> the youth and that you know we could tie into that it's like can so I'm I guess we've already answered it but can TV and social media cause a form of PTSD cause I know after I watched that clip I was fucked up I yeah, was really fucked up so. cause there's one thing for it you rob. Fear, it's yeah. one thing for you to rob somebody, but you shot him. Right. And I don't even know if he's alive. And you shot him several times. So it's like if you have no regard for life for this random person you never met. The fo- yeah, I, I feel like so right. something has to be truly, truly like yeah. wrong with you, and you had to do like you. Have, first of all, why you rob for him? Then on top of that, it's like you feel the need to shoot him. Yeah. Like, at that point, you feel the need to take his life. For what? And it's all of y'all on one person. Like, wait, yeah. what's it was happening? heartbreaking, yo. You hear a woman screaming in the back, like, no, no, leave him alone. And I, I briefly read the comments. It sound, somebody was, because I only watched the video once. It was like somebody said, I think they were stabbing him too. So it's like, yo, fam, what what are you doing? It's four of y'all. I'm already tired. I don't even see the video. Like, and that, and, and I think just that instance of me just being like, I roll what, what like, I, it's really just comes down to desensitization because you see so much of this shit all the time. I mean, and with TV, you can really separate, I, I think with television outside of like more fictional television, like you might mm-hmm. see these scenarios happen. It's like, all right, there's a suspense of disbelief there. Like, you know, like, all right, this is fictional, this is TV, yeah. you know, just scripted. So even if it's a realistic situation, you could separate that. But if you watch the news, which... Well, fuck me. If you if you want a trigger, watch the eleven o'clock news because everything is bad. <laughs> everything is worse. You know what I'm saying? Like you watch the news and you like you are online and you see all these links and all these articles and all the shit. Like you know, chick gets robbed, dude gets slashed, baby gets chucked out of. The I don't know what the fuck, but all these things and it comes to a point where it's like 
you see it, you read it, you get sad, and then at that point, some point, you just get numb. It's just like, well, the fuck. Yeah, that's why I try to avoid it as much as I can. I don't know I'm, what I'm made numb. me. Yeah, I don't know what made me slip up that one moment. I think I was just, I just got caught up. But yeah, I don't watch the news, social media. I'm pretty good at gauging the type of people I follow. Definitely gonna have to do a purge on my Facebook. Whoa. But um, <laughs> yeah, for the most part. Usually, I don't find out things until after the fact. Or if it's something that's really, really major and everybody's talking about it, yeah. then you can't avoid it. But for the most part, a lot of shit, I do not catch the wave about because I just, I don't want to, I don't want to be desensitized. And I, at the same time, I don't want that to shit, I don't want that to be the norm as well. Yeah, it's kind of hard though. I mean, certain things like definitely pull me or definitely like affect me and other things are just like, well, another day. What, like what can because you feel powerless at a point you know what I'm saying like when you get the sense of how you feel powerless it's like well, what the fuck can I do so it's just like I this fucked up shit happens okay yeah, you know what I'm saying like and that and that and that's probably the the worst side of PTSD where to the point where you just like you you feel defeated you feel defeated nothing you can do about it you don't hold the power anymore so it's just like if shit happens then fuck like how what can I do to change the outcome what can I do to kind of Reverse the shit because it's all around me. Yeah. Great point. Great point. Not at the moment. So, um, race and PTSD. Because yeah. I, I mean, that was the overall question that I had with, as being a minority, being a person of color, do you feel as though we are programmed to have PTSD? And I think you kind of jumped to, to it already with, um, you know, well, more so from the genetic, the historical fact of you know Mm -hmm. everybody that dealt with the civil rights movement and now how racism has evolved to what it is today so i feel as though you you probably are programmed because we're already coming from if you're lucky and you don't have to deal with this you're probably coming from an environment that may be hostile depending on the neighborhood that you're dealing with or even if you don't you may be traveling to a school where things are hostile because even though my neighborhood you know, I grew up in East Flatbush for a majority of my life. Man, my neighborhood wasn't that bad, but going to junior high school and then going to high school, that's when I would see wild yeah, shit. shit go down, yeah. That's when I would see kids get jumped. That's when I'm traveling, going to work. That's when I would see wild shit. When I was dating a chick from the Bronx and riding a train home, that's when I would see, like, wild that shit on the train. You know, dudes getting flipped or dudes getting robbed, like, right in front of me. Casually, right? Like it's just another day in the hood. It's Man, like it's ten o'clock on a Monday. Can we all just like get to work on time and safe? Yeah, like even this morning, I I thought I was gonna be late to work because somebody was on the train tracks. It is six a.m. What are you doing on the tracks, bro? Six a.m. Why are you on the train tracks at J Street Metro Tech Center? Chasing mm-hmm. rats. Or the rent is mad low downtown. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's mad low on the ground. Yeah. I'm just saying, but I yeah, feel as true. though. For people of color, we've reached a point, I don't know if and many people will admit to that, but I feel like you, you do go through some form of PTSD. And it doesn't even have to be something, you know, traumatic to the extent of, you know, crime or abuse or things of that nature. Just living from a societal standpoint could be a form of PTSD. I mean, how many people are fucking probably discouraged that, you know, they went to school pay have to take out a loan and, so and now they can't even get a fucking job mm-hmm. i just got an email at work the other day about somebody that needed a refund for something because they are now in some sort of program because they graduated school and they can't pay for their fucking website i don't know where my next meal is coming from because i can't get a job in my field right and my not only do i gotta pay my rent and i gotta pay for food um federal government is asking me to start making payments on my own now right. so i can feel like yeah you can as being a person of color you probably deal with some form of ptsd in some way or another yeah especially if you're like especially if it's like blatant you catch an l's left and right you know you've seen things happen to other people in sim- similar situations you know what i mean it's like all right well this is just it just comes with the game you know what i mean like i can't avoid it you know what I'm saying? Just being black in America alone is a trigger. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it could be very overwhelming. It could be very overwhelming. And I even, I mean, you know, once again, I'm in therapy. I haven't even 
nipped like I'm at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to just those things. I haven't even I haven't even gotten to the part where it's like, yo, me just being a black man in America, how do I even navigate life? Because the fuck. I've definitely <laughs> like, I've definitely had those moments where I've sat in my crib and I've really just I won't say sucked into depression, but I definitely had those moments where I felt absolutely defeated, where I really don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Because yeah. what I was doing at that point was not helping and I didn't have a solution. I really didn't have a solution. And thankfully, I guess I'm ignorant enough to, you know, <laughs> not deal with the shit and just fucking move on. But I can imagine how many people were probably in the same position and, you know, they either take their own lives, they fall into drugs or you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, the typical, oh, you came from a single parent home and, you know, you grew up in the hood and you didn't have food and things of that nature. Sometimes just being an, a fucking adult <laughs> can be Man, it's PTSD. Be... The amount of people who have admitted to me, like, yo, they've been also almost contemplating, like, taking their life on some real shit, like, too, too many. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. it's just, like, I can't even wrap my brain around it in the sense of, like, not even in the sense of like a privilege where it's like, oh, it can't be that bad. It can never get that bad. But it's just more like, what is that one point, that breaking point that will make you think like, yo, game over life? Well, all right, well, better than this shit. Like, I can't, I can't even, I can't even begin to imagine. Like, that shit's wild. And it's, it's not wild in the sense of like, yo, they're wilding, but it's a wild, like, your life could get that pressure full. You know what I'm saying? To where... The PTSDs and the and the depressions and all those triggers just, you know, it's too much for one person to handle. But sometimes yeah. it is. Yeah. And that being said, it's like another thing people need to stop doing is also trying to. I think we've mentioned this before. Is like comparing everybody's struggles. Like, just because my circumstances are different than your circumstances doesn't mean they're not valid. Of course. Like, I I'm tired of people talking about it or posting on social media like oh you ain't deal with this so whatever you got going on ain't it ain't a real issue it's like it's not a real issue for you maybe but right. for that individual it's very major. fucking real it's major fam we had a whole ass person just talk about his whole life story on this podcast right. and now i feel like well my problem is not that bad <laughs> like, yeah it's not that bad but at like, the same time it's still mine. And it's, it's still, still yeah, it's, yeah, it's still, still something yours. you have to deal with on a day to day basis. Right. And God forbid you're not strong enough to deal with it. That's really Thankfully true. for Chris, he was strong enough to deal with all, you know, his ups and downs in his life. And he also sought help too, which a lot of people I mean, we've know. seen numerous cases of people that are quote unquote well off take their own life. Well, there you go. So it doesn't really matter what you know your social economic status. If it's something that fucking troubles you, it troubles. It fucking you. how many celebrities we've seen falling into drugs? Facts. And we and I, I've, everybody has done it. It's like, oh, how could you, you know, do stuff like that? You know, you you have all this money, you have all this fame. It's like that don't mean shit. That means absolutely nothing. Yeah, money doesn't have, buy you happiness. I mean, you could give it to me if it doesn't make you happy. But shit, I could use a couple of racks right now. Honestly. I'm just saying, we need to have a cash app for the show. Please. Because these, these studio payments do SI get quite pod. heavy. Well, we don't have one, but if we were to have one, it would be dollar sign SI pod. <laughs> but coming soon. But, you know, after all these points that we've made, I wanted to end off with, like, actual ways to cope with PTSD so people can actually, you know, think about some things that they could do or possibly indulge in so that... You know, if you're listening and you realize, like, look, I might be dealing with some shit that I need to take care of, you have some outlets. So the first one they mentioned is counseling. Obviously, therapy is probably the number one thing. Uh, I think yeah. especially for people of color, we are preconditioned to bottle everything up, especially black men. So Hands up. there's nothing wrong with you know, talking to your friends, talking to anybody that's listening that's going to give you constructive advice. But if you are in the position to seek therapy, please go and do so. Right. Because there's no better help than an actual professional. Because yeah. sometimes you may share certain things, and I almost forgot this point. 
Have y'all seen that video of that kid that went downstairs to talk to his mother about, I guess, his father touching him? It was a boy. I thought it was a girl. No, oh, whatever. This. Well, I didn't. I didn't see the. You sex. didn't watch it. I didn't. I couldn't. I saw the first. It was like a the ten part clip on Instagram. After the first one, I cut it off. Oh, I couldn't no. do it. So a little girl went downstairs to tell her mom that her boyfriend had been touching her, and the mother pretty much blamed her, like, "Oh, cause you trying to take my man? Why you walking house in booty shorts anyway?" Oh, she oh, sounded like yada. she was like eight. She, 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 oh, she was a part. young child. She was sixteen. Oh, she was sixteen. Well, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter the age, but yeah. yeah. And the mother, but you know what bothered me the most is that I had a conversation with a client, and she was talking about how she gets foster kids, and she's like, "I will never adopt uh, an older girl." And I'm like, well, "Those are the girls who usually need the most help because no one wants to help them. Nobody wants to sit down, and talk to little girls anymore, ask mm, them like, right. what the fuck is wrong with you, and why are you behaving this way?'" She was like, "Because I had one, and she was fresh, and you know, she was trying to take my man." I'm like, first of all, if your man is even attracted to a little girl, that's a problem right then and there. Right, that's can't red no, flag number one. No child be trying yeah. to take your man away from you. How fucking and insecure, and insecure are you? And, right, child and, and quote, unquote, child. let's say she was fresh. How you know, how you don't know she was probably like sex trafficked and that's, and that's, or some shit like that. And that's like what that. I'm How you know mm-hmm. she ever been molested or raped or anything? Like you, not saying that's, the no, reason. it is, that, that can be a reason sometimes. Girls become very promiscuous. After, um, the fact. after being right. raped because they feel like well this is normal behavior want normal behavior because this is what was taken from me so I guess it's what I'm supposed to do right but and either, either way it can't be like it, the onus of that can't be blamed on, on the child not at all but the mother was really pissed she was like I'm tired of you keep telling me this bullshit he well, a good dumb. he a good man like what does that mean a good man gotta do I, I and she like so what do he do she was like when you guys be coming home from the club at night he be coming in my room and he touch me in places he shouldn't right. and she sounded like she was like literally on the verge of tears and her mother was yeah. pissed like no this my man you're trying to take him away from me you always coming here watch. telling me this Shut bullshit up. like she was really cursing the little girl Shut out and I was fuck. like that's why what? I couldn't watch it cause I, I watched the Come first on. part of the first clip and when she just she was just like oh he, he came into my room again her tone and the yeah. way she kinda like looked back it's like the fuck you want Right. You telling me this shit again? Well, the, Son, I was so fucking heated. Beyond and beyond I mean beyond the, the the implications of what was happening, the mom has her own shit that she has to figure out because she probably has been through some shit like that. Yeah, he probably and, he, and, in those cases, he probably be beating her ass. Who the fuck knows what's going on? But she sh- I don't want to say well, hopefully, dumb. Hopefully hopefully that girl does get help cuz I don't think she anybody re- revealed her name or anything i think it was kind of like anonymous or whatever mm-hmm. she did put it out hopefully she gets out but the only reason why that made me think about that because with the counseling we do there are circumstances where people do share and sometimes you're not sharing to a source that needs can't to help hear, you that can help you right. so if you are able to get you know some professional help please go do so and and just to preface that therapy is not for everybody I think, I think a lot of people need to understand that as well. It's not for everybody. It's you not have to, say to come that in with an open mind. It's not Right. It's not to say that you can't have it, but you have to have an open mind and you have to be able to receive the information or receive, right. you know, the help needed. You know what I'm saying? There are other ways. There are other outlets that you could utilize, you know what I'm saying? Like, outside of the professional help, if you have someone to talk to or if you have, like, someone that you could confide in, that's cool. But just know that, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be open to recognize that you need the help, right. regardless of where it comes from. Yeah. And that's the first steps. Because if you ever watch any of those TV shows where, like, for example, like Friends from College, mm-hmm. and I think uh, one of the characters on there was start, was going to uh, therapy, she was just pretty much arguing with her therapist the whole time. Right. And she just kept repeating the same fuck shit that keep getting her in trouble. And that's, that's f- funny enough you mentioned that, um, because that's something that I had to be mindful of when I was... You know, going through these first couple of sessions, like sometimes I tend to be defensive. defensive. No, not even defensive, but or know it all. So, oh, in yeah. the sense of like, if you nobody know, can know you better than yourself, right? If she if she is mentioning something, then I like a part of me felt like quick to like jump and say, "Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that." Because mm-hmm. obviously, we want to seem like everything is okay, but I had to kind of take myself back and realize, like, all right, I might have I might have thought of this before, but I am not trying to sit here and assume anything about myself or jump the gun and say like yo I know I know I know because if, if that's the case if I knew all this shit then why am I here yeah you wanna be <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying so that's another thing to be mindful of yeah now, I'll, I'll go through these somewhat quickly since we're short on time mm-hmm. but mindfulness I think uh, a lot of times we kind of ignore 
our thoughts. It's like their thoughts, but then it's like, yeah, I was bugging. It's like, nah. Nah, you weren't bugging. Man. You, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were bugging, but you need to realize you were bugging and be aware of your thoughts and the things that you do. Exercise is also a good form to deal with PTSD because, you know, yeah, like you said, it's a stress reliever. It keeps you, your mind clear. It keeps you focused on, you know, your your goals while you're in the gym and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Lifestyle changes. The examples they gave was like, you know, changing your diet or mm-hmm. switching things Put up. down the Henny. Pick up some Dasani. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, not Dasani. Dasani. I'm just being at <laughs> <laughs> Don't just pick up Dasani. I'm drinking yeah, Poland Spring right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hashtag uh, more filter. <laughs> I have a filter at home thing. I'll fix it when I get home. Another one was journaling. Sometimes if, I guess in those circumstances where you don't want to talk to anybody about what you're dealing with, if you write it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I don't mean to laugh. But it's, <laughs> I've recently come into a running joke about Moesha. <laughs> and how, like, every episode she used to write in her diary. <laughs> it's just funny. It's an inside joke, but it's hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> he interrupted me for that? <laughs> no, it's just funny. It's uh, and then spending time with people. And I think a lot of times when people deal with PTSD, they start to isolate themselves and it's like nobody can understand what I'm dealing with. And sometimes it's like, yo, you sometimes you ignore the support system that's already there for you. Right. That's very true. I've recently been trying to reconnect with friends and other people that I used to talk to more frequently. Um, So that's something that I'm working on actively. Like if like if someone crosses your mind and stuff like that, it's like, like, oh, I wonder how they're doing. All right, whatever. Reach out. Actually, yeah, shoot actually a text. reach out. Maybe try using, you know, there's this thing, there's this app on your phone um, that you can use. Uh, you can use it to, like, call people. I think it's called the phone app. It's mad crazy. Like, it comes with every phone. You should try it. That's why. Who the fuck am calling? <laughs> just not really All right, you phone. missed the point. The point is reaching out. I was just saying as a, as a source of reaching out. Oh, you can call please people. crop use that your voice. video. <laughs> Uh, with her face. Please crop that Dang, video. I need that. Just that. Went right over here. That's a new meme. Try, call, try, try calling people. I don't care. Maybe. Try it once. Try it once oh a month. God. Pretend you got minutes. Maybe I feel for like nine. I got enough people in my phone that I talk to on a weekly, daily basis. Do you call them? And if you're not in that, then I'm probably not going to talk to you. All right, so treat it like top five, like T-Mobile. Mm, I'm not Drake. Nope. Try calling one person a week. That's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Not I'm yet, trying to help yet. you. Not <laughs> you. <laughs> thank help everybody. You help you. Thank everybody for tuning in. As always, shout out to our executive producer Bianca. Gang. As yeah, always. Um, you can catch the episode every Monday on most streaming platforms: Spotify, yes, Apple please. Podcast, uh, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, pretty much any and everywhere. Uh, you can always visit the website, sipodcast.com. You can hit us up on our email, us at sipodcast.com. You can just always DM us if you want to be on the show. All right. I said this fucking salute. Oh, Wait, before you go into that rant, before you let, start me, rant. let yeah. me plug my thing, please. Oh, please. My, my apologies. Thank you. We, okay. have, we have a real We have a real happening. situation happening here, guys. <laughs> if you follow myself and the podcast, um, then you know that I have a dog. Um, his name is Pacey, and recently he was diagnosed with a tumor on his liver, so he has cancer. Um, so I have a GoFundMe to where I'm trying to raise as much money as possible to cover the rest of the fee. So I'll just tell you guys what happened, because I know y'all want to know why y'all giving me money. Right. Um, we had insurance for him. A lot of people asked that I have insurance. Yes, I had insurance for him. But what happened with the insurance, they told me that I would have to pay up front, and then they would reimburse me my money. And that's not what they initially told me. So right now we're trying to raise um, the last five thousand dollars or so. Right now we're almost at a thousand in three days. Gang gang. Um. So everyone who's donated, I really really appreciate it. So if you can and you follow me at Naima um, underscore Simone on Instagram. I, on Instagram, Imagine. I have the link in my bio. I always post on the um, podcast Instagram story as well, so you can always you know find me through there if you need to and um hit the link donate ten dollars twenty dollars five dollars anything um spread the word um anything you can do i appreciate it because 
I'm trying to save my baby. As we speak right now, I'm donating because I believe in the future. <laughs> is that, is that message too? It is amazing. <laughs> I really f- the future is dog. <laughs> well, there you go. Some some and I understand some people are not into animals and some people don't understand how you can connect to it. But like this is this is my baby. And um he's not dying right now, but if he doesn't get this removed then he will succumb to it. So I'm trying to okay. Yes. Oh, wow. The right link now. is also on the web it. the link is also on the website as well. As soon as you jump in, that's like the first thing on the very top of the website. Yeah. So do your part and don't be a bum, in other words. I don't be a bum. It. <laughs> I appreciate it so but, much. But um, guys. yeah, that's it. That's all. Oh yeah, the, the, my Steven soliloquy. Wants to be, right, <laughs> soliloquy. After that heartfelt. This guy's had, mantra. I'll let him I'm just saying, mic. nah, because I told people, if you're going to email us about being on the show, make sure you actually send something in detail. Give us an angle. Give us something to work with. That's why when Steven sent that screenshot in the group chat, I answered the way I did. I'm like, I'm definitely not responding. I never. Responded, that shit was dumb. To be fair. And it was like, I <laughs> as soon as I posted it. Well, no. I think right before I posted it, I had just got another email from this from somebody that was saying they wanted to be on the show, and it was like, "Yo, you only do A, B, and C. Like, how the fuck am I gonna stretch this out to sixty minutes?" Right. So it's like, I'm good. Cause I've like, gotten it to where it's like, "Hey, I do this and that." I'm like, "Okay, so what you want to come on the show and talk about? I don't know. We could talk about this. That ain't got nothing to do with the fuck you just told me. You right. talking about you're an engineer." And you want to talk about, I don't know, suck a dick in the alley. That has nothing to do, just saying, that what has nothing to do or correlate with you Did being she get an engineer. Money while she was in the alley? How do you know it was a, a girl? First of all. Well, well, twist. No, that's an episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Please yeah. email us back so you can be on the show. Yeah, no, um, but crazy. not. But uh, all in all, yeah, don't do not do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Like, it's dumb. And don't ask us no fucking... Obvious question. Obvious fucking question is like, are there men and women on the show? No, it's just, it's led by fucking dogs. I was so it's upset. dogs on the mic. Yeah, I mean, that might be a good podcast. That should be dope. You, y'all know I always. Oh, to oh, Nemo definitely be no. <laughs> 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 right, I'm turning off everybody. Mike, we going home. That's sophisticated ignorance, and we're fucking out. Donate. <laughs> Save a life. We are oh. out here. Tag. Fuck y'all talking about. <laughs> Sophisticated okay. ignorance. Are y'all fucking crazy? That's a fact. Talk Are y'all crazy? Yo, y'all get me tight. Like, I be out this here trying to be, be humble. Let's be not get drop. fucking crazy. Sophisticated ignorance. All right?